welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. I'm Pristaline, the owner of A Life Full Simplicity. Today I'll be unboxing and flipping through the Necronomicon tarot deck and guidebook. This is by Christopher March and illustrated by James Guzma. This is uh, published by Insight Editions, and Insight Editions did send me this for the purposes of review. Uh, they actually surprised me with this, to be very honest with you. I had requested a few decks that they've previously come out with for Spooky Month uh, in October, and they included one. They included this particular deck in the box, and I didn't know that they were going to include it. So, I do want to thank them very much for including this, even though I won't be unboxing it. In October because when you're seeing this it's September I'm still really excited about it and hopefully we'll be able to do um, something fun in October with it but this just released this release on September 5th and I'm super excited let's get into it it looks creepy from what I saw in my upcoming releases video if you haven't seen that video it'll be linked in the cards above so this is the box so there is um, spot gloss as you can see but this part here is like raised or something it's like really cool like this whole part here it's really interesting like you can see it's really cool so you want to see the details a bit uh, looks really really cool so I'm really excited to get into this because it looks awesome now, in the back here, it says, let the Necronomicon guide you with this epic tarot deck and accompanying book filled with stunning original artwork inspired by the dark, fantastical visions of H.P. Lovecraft. So this includes a fully illustrated 78-card uh, deck and 128-page guidebook. This retails for uh, 24 99 in the US, 33.99 in Canada. We do have some sample images here. I don't know if you can see. So that's cool. And the sample images are all spot gloss as well, which I really love. It's really cool. So when you open it, it's just dark black on the inside. Here we have um just gray Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, there we go. just gray but you see like the imprint of where <laughs> the top part is raised which is really interesting really cool okay so we have a ribbon like we usually do with inside edition decks so I'll take out the book take out the cards okay Nothing on the inside except for the red ribbon. Okay. So let's take a look at the guidebook first. So this is the cover. Back. So it says here that it's written by Christopher March and illustrated by James Busma. So we have an introduction. We have understanding your tarot deck. We have all the major arcana, which it seems like they've changed the names of the major arcana. We have the minor arcana, and it looks like they've um, changed the suit names, except for pentacles. Then we have tarot readings. Caring for your deck and preparing to read, and then the spreads. Okay. So we have a quote here from H.P. Lovecraft The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear, and the oldest and strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown. Interesting. It's really cool. So I'm wondering if they have any information on the suits. Okay, understanding your tarot deck. Look at that. That's so cool. So the uh, book is in full color. Um... Mm. 
Okay. It doesn't say anything. Here's major arcana. So it goes right into the major. So it does not state that this is, you know, uh, the magician, but it is numbered, so it should uh, go along the same. So some of them have quotes and some of them don't. Okay. Okay, I want to see Minor Arcana. Here we go. So, books is first. Um, so, is books swords? Hmm. Does it not say at all in the beginning? Uh, what's what? Okay. Mm. Hmm. What does it look like it? Um. No, it doesn't look like it. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I think books are swords um, because it's talking about intellectual and intellectual is the mind. Then torches. Um, let's look at the ace. Yeah, I think torches is wands. And then we have beakers, which I'm going to assume are cups. Mm, yeah, start of a love affair, love itself, overflowing with possible, uh, overflowing and possibly overwhelming positive emotions. Yeah. Okay. So cups and then pentacles weren't renamed. So pentacles. Okay. Wish they had put that in the book, though. Um, would have been helpful uh, to know. Like, even if they had put it just in, like, in the beginning. Just to say, you know, books of swords. Uh, torches is wands. And whatnot. So, yeah, we have uh, caring for your deck. Preparing to read tarot. We have some spreads. So we have a what do you fear spread. We have exploring fear spread. Very shadow work vibes. We have how do you handle this spread. Interesting. This one requires you to split the deck. We have a hero's journey. And then about the author and the illustrator. Interesting. Okay, we will read from the guidebook um, once we go through the cards so we can see uh, how that reads. Okay, let's see. So here's the fool. These are the backs. So the number is at the top with the title at the bottom of the card. So this is the magician. We have the High Priestess. So 
for the Empress. Growth makes sense for the Empress, so I'm not mad at it. Emperor. That is a freaky. I love it though. <laughs> then we have the Hierophant. Oh my god. Crazy. The Lovers. Ooh. Aliens. <clears throat> then we have the chariot. Interesting. Violence as the chariot. That is so weird, though. Like, look at it. Then we have desire, which is... <clears throat> uh, strength? Is this a strength card? Yeah, strength. Lead to strength. Unless they changed. Um, no. Okay, they didn't. Sometimes people change um, strength and justice. So I wanted to see, but no, they didn't. So this is the strength card. Demons or something. This is the hermit, and the hermit is haunting. Like, oh my god, this guy has no eyes. And I hit my camera, sorry. This guy has no eyes. This deck is, like, so perfect for the Halloween month. Honestly, if you're into stuff like this year-round, you could literally use this year-round. But for Halloween, oh my god, this is so good. Then we have the wheel change. Makes sense. I really like this. Yeah, see, this is justice, guilt, truth, with the mirror. Wow. This has a lot of depth, though, for a justice card. And then we have the hangman, which is sacrifice. I do like that um, name change for the hangman, because typically that's what's the keyword is associated. Um with the hangman. Then we have death. So death didn't change. Interesting. Uh, then we have after death is uh, temperance. Contamination. Interesting. So weird. That's really interesting because technically when you when you see the the in the temperance card you see the angel mixing typically or putting water into the other cup. Typically it could either go one of two ways. It could either be water mixing between cups or it could be water and fire mixing together and depending on the imagery. But, like, if we're talking about traditional, it's like water going into another cup. So, technically, contamination works. It works. That's good. I like that, actually. Then we have the devil. Corruption. That makes sense, honestly. <laughs> Freaky, also, with the red eyes. Then we have sins of the ancestors. <laughs> This is the tower card. That's cool. Science? Uh, what card is this? After the tarot is the star, typically. Science for the star. That's interesting. Okay. This one I would probably have to sit with a bit. Oh, well... I guess the star is typically associated with self-discovery or discovery of some sort, typically within the self. But yeah, so that could make sense, actually, because science is a lot is about a lot of discoveries or self-discoveries, in my opinion. So, OK. 
For the moon, we have madness. Oh, wow. This is a good moon card. Look at all the phases in the water. That's so cool. That's so cool. I really like this. I'm actually really liking this. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Like, it looked cool when I was, like, um, looking at it on the on Amazon. But I wasn't sure about it. This is weird. What is going on? Shame and decay. So this is the sun. <laughs> I can't. What in the world? Stop. That's so weird. <laughs> That's so funny, though. I love it. This is so creepy. <laughs> Chaos for judgment. That's good. I like that. Has a lot of teeth though. That thing. Mm. The void. Mm. This is the world card. Interesting. Okay. Then we get into the King of Books. So now we're getting into the swords. We have a little symbols there. No, those are all the same. The other ones have numbers. Yeah, the other ones have numbers. So for the quartz, it looks like it just has like a little symbol. I wonder if they're the same as the other quartz. Yeah, they are. Okay. Love this. Love this king of books. And we have the Queen of Books. Oh, I love her. Love her so much. She has like a book that's locked and she has the key. That's so cool. Then we have the Knight of Books. I wonder if it says who these people are in the guidebook. I'm like curious to know. Let me look actually for the the first no maybe they don't rep represent anyone specific like maybe they don't represent specific characters and they're just supposed to be cool Yeah, no, it doesn't say. So, yeah, that was the night. The creepiness in the background is pretty cool. And then we have the page. The Ace of Books. So, this is the Ace of Swords. Interesting. I love it, though, with the locked book. We have the tentacles, the key. That's really, really interesting. Then we have the two of swords. <clears throat> three of swords. So typically the three of swords is like three swords and a heart. So I kind of like this imagery of like a book on fire. Four of Swords. Hmm. Five of Swords. I actually do get this, actually. I really like it because you, you're trying to unlock or you're trying to get ahead um, first without any consequences. So you have all these like locks already unlocked. To be able to get to this book here that's also locked with the gold lock instead. We have the six of books. You have different pathways. The seven. Hmm. Person's. Take in some books. 
And the Eight of Swords. That's interesting. The Nine. Hmm. Typically the Nine is like the Fear card. And this deck is already fearful <laughs> with some of its imagery. So I'm like trying to understand um, this particular card. Let's see. I want to see what it says. Uh, okay, it says, uh, do not give into your fears. You're almost at the end. You may be overthinking a particular situation or allowing yourself to obsess over something over which you have no control. Allowing yourself to feel your deepest fear may be useful, so then you can move on. Interesting. And then in reverse, that was the upright, and then in reverse it says a change of attitude and awakening from a nightmare, aversion therapy. Okay. So maybe like, these are supposed to represent all your fears or your obsessions. And then we have the Ten of Swords. Then we go into Wands. There's the King. We have the Queen. The Knight. And then the page. Hmm. We have the ace, which I really like. We have the two. Definitely representative of planning, being getting organized, things like that. Planning your next steps. So, yes. And then three of wands. Yeah, I do like that. There's different ways you can go. So where is the path taking you? It's a four of wands. Cool. <laughs> the five. Definitely some conflict there. Six. Mm. Seven. Defense, maybe. Putting up barriers. I do like this because typically in the traditional we have like eight sword um eight wands just there displayed but the thing is the eight of wands is supposed to display action it's supposed to be quick action typically and the fact that there's no movement in that card not really anyway unless someone adds movement into the card uh, but the traditional doesn't have really any movement so I like that there's movement from the car. You see that someone is trying to get somewhere. And a car is pretty quick, right? If you're driving fast. So I think that's pretty good. We have the nine of torches, which is the nine of wands. And then the ten of wands, which is pretty indicative of, you know, overburdening yourself. I really do like that. And uh, their lamp broke also. That's a weird... This person looks weird, though. They have black eyes. <laughs> I have to look at it closer. And then we have the King of Cups. Look at him. All the space above his head. <laughs> we have the Queen of Cups. Mad scientist-like. We have the knight. Ooh. Looks like he's unlocking something. 
We have the page. And we have the ace. We have the two. Mm. There's a, definitely a building of connection. You can see like the two. They're pouring something which is starting to build its own connection together, which is interesting. There's like a reaction from the two things mixing. We have the three. <laughs> the four, oh my God. Breathing in that green smoke. <laughs> we have the five. Yeah, that's pretty much indicative of pain. You know, the five of cups is typically about pain, about disappointment, hurt of some kind. So I do like that. We have the six. Mm. Kind of looks like you're looking into like a time thing. Kind of reminds me of that. What is it? That uh, part in Harry Potter where, you know, Dumbledore takes out his memories and puts it into like that bowl of water and then Harry gets sucked into it. This kind of reminds me of the same thing. You have the Seven of Cups. So typically what we see displayed in the Seven of Cups is like choice. You have many different options available to you, right? And we kind of can see that with the amount of beakers that are here. There's like different kinds of beakers that are available. But this person is also daydreaming. And Seven of Cups is also about imagination and daydreaming and just being in your mind and not paying attention to what's in front of you, right? So I feel like this card does a good job with that. And they're specifically focusing on like the daydreaming aspect. We have the eight cups. Oh, a, a catastrophe happened and the person like left, I guess. <laughs> then we have the nine of cups. I've done it. I've fulfilled my destiny. <laughs> Which leads into this. Fulfillment, happiness. Oh my god, so good. <laughs> and then we have the King of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles. She reminds me of the Grove card, uh, which is the Empress. Pretty cool. And then we have the Knight. Hmm. Page. Ooh, her eyes are green. It's very creepy. And then we have the Ace of Pentacles. I love the Aces. They're really nice. The two. Interesting. There's like two forces at play. And I guess the importance is like balancing the two. And you can do that with the key. The key. The three of pentacles. Okay, teamwork. Definitely get teamwork from this. Four of pentacles. Hmm. Interesting. It's as if, like, everything is being hoarded in these jars right here, but all the other jars are empty. It's interesting. Five. Very typical, honestly. Very typical of a five pentacles. <laughs> oh, six of pentacles. Interesting. It's like a helping hand. And the seven of pentacles. Interesting. 
So that's interesting between the two. So this person's working on the item and here's the item fully created. So that's interesting. Very interesting. But I do like that actually. I do like that. So we have the seven of pentacles, the eight of pentacles. We have the nine of pentacles. I love this nine of pentacles. Very nice. And then lastly, the ten of pentacles. Very interesting. This is really good. I am very impressed. Honestly, I feel like Insight Editions is doing way better of a job than uh, some of their other decks, even though I like some of their beginner, like the decks that they did in the beginning, like the Nightmare Before Christmas, the Disney villains. Um, those are some of my favorites. Plus, I really love the universal monsters deck that's another one of my favorites i will have to say that this will probably be another favorite of mine because this is really great i feel like they did a fantastic job with this like the the artist did an amazing job now let's read the guidebook and see how the author did because i feel like sometimes there's a disconnect between the artist's work and the author uh, that's there in some, in some of their decks. Well, specifically the horror terror, there's a big disconnect between those two. Um, you could really tell that there was a disconnect with, with those specifically, but I really enjoy uh, most of their other decks. Like, like I said, the um, Disney villains, Nightmare Before Christmas, the book and the artwork were really synchronized together. I think they did a fantastic job. I really enjoyed also the, um, was it Dark Crystal Tarot? The book was fantastic with the artwork. I think the, there was a good synchronicity there. Supernatural also had a good synchronicity. Uh, that's a pip deck though. So I thought that they did a good job together. Um... <clears throat> yeah, I think the only issue that I've had so far is with the horror tarot. Uh, so I'm hoping to see some good connection between what's going on in the art and in the book. Like, this is supposed to be based on H.P. Lovecraft. So, you know, I want to see how they bring that in. The art looks great and looks like they bring in a lot of H.P. Lovecraft's, like, work, but in, like, you know imagery form so i'm excited to see um how the guidebook how the guidebook will will fend in that regard but before we get into that and before we shuffle i want to talk about the cardstock the cardstock is actually really nice i want to see which one it compares to in regards to like some of their previous decks so just give me a moment i'm just going to take out some of their decks and see uh what it compares to the most Okay, so I feel like uh, in terms of the cardstock, I feel like it's most comparable to the Universal Monsters in regards to touch as well as thickness. Um, but if you don't have this deck, I feel like in regards to touch, probably the Disney Villains uh, is pretty soft. Just the thickness is not the same. The Disney Villains is way thinner. Um... And this deck is thicker than the Disney villains for sure. Uh, but I really like it. I like the softness of it. It is a matte. It will most probably clump in the beginning. Uh, and really needs to be used uh, to loosen up a bit. So you can see that there's a bit of clumping and things like that. But it's not too bad. In my opinion it's not as bad as the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Which is fine now because I use it a lot but... It takes some getting used to um, for the map to, to slide a little better. So, I'm 
Try to shuffle as much as I can so we can get some cards. I'm going to read three cards. So I'm going to read one major card, one minor card, and one court card. That way you can see, um, or hear rather, um, also see because I typically show the entries, but um, how the guidebook is. Okay, well, let's take a look. So what do we have here? Okay, we have the knight. Hierophant. Nope, that's a major card. I don't want two cup cards. Here, six of books, some swords. Okay. 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 So hold this one first. And then this one. And then this one. Okay, so let's read first for Knight of Beakers. So this is the Knight of Cups. Knight of Beakers, upright. A person who adventures in the world of dreams, a shaman. Someone who can move between different realms, real or imaginary. A shapeshifter, traveler, and astronaut. Reversed. A companion who can lead you beyond the veil and back again. Eh. Not really impressed with the core cards, to be honest with you. Because their focus is on who this is, if it was a person. But what if you don't read the core cards that way? You know? So I feel like... Eh, you might need to use... You might need to use uh, another book um, for the courts. Let's see how the majors sound. I will also say that it doesn't state um, or doesn't bring in the element of HP Lovecraft. Um, from what I can see in the in the court cards, uh, which is kind of unfortunate, but. Yeah, I still, like, really love the artwork, though. I probably will use this without the book. But let's take a look at the Hierophant, which is knowledge. Very creepy, honestly. Knowledge. A person at the very moment they understand the full horror of a situation. This is a theme often repeated in the works of Lovecraft. Too much knowledge is a dangerous thing. Too much knowledge may drive us all over the brink of sanity. So here in the majors, they actually incorporate stuff about Lovecraft. I wish they would have done that throughout, though. Upright. The fear is of knowing too much or of people who know more than you do. If you have a loathing of experts, ask yourself why that is. Reversed. Are you asking the right questions of the right experts? Are you frightened of admitting your own ignorance? The wise person knows that they know nothing. Only the fool believes he knows everything. So I do like that. I wish they would have done what they did here with that core card. So this is what I read for the Hierophant. Okay. Now let's get into the Six of Books, which is uh, 
Six of Swords. Okay. Upright. Entering new territory. Be brave. You are going through a period of transition. You need to keep your eyes on the road ahead, ignoring the Shoggoths on either side of you. I don't know what that is. Uh, reversed. Setting out an inner journey or going back to discover lost parts of yourself in the past. Let me Google this word. I don't know what this is. Let's see. Shoggoths. Uh, meaning. Mm, okay, so a Shoggoth is a fictional monster in the Cthulhu mythos. Okay. So this is what I read for the Six of Bucks. See, this is a little better. So I guess this court card was just not, not vibing, not vibing. Let's see another court card. Can I, I want to see another court card. Let's read another court card from here. King of Cups. Okay. King of Cups. I want to read another court card. Maybe it was just that court card that I wasn't vibing with. Okay. Let's see. Okay. King of Cups. A monarch of the world of imagination or world of dreams. Author of fiction, psychoanalyst, mystic musician. Word weaver, image maker. Reversed. The king may be in your past, in your childhood. Look back who influenced your dreams and imaginations, imagination when you were growing up. Okay, that's a little better. Let's read, uh, let's see. Here, I'll show you what I read first. And then we can read, like, maybe a different chord from a different, whole different suit not bad i think it was maybe the knight of cups i wasn't vibing with right that was the knight yeah the knight of cups okay let's see uh here we have the page of wands the queen of swords Here, King of Pentacles. Let's see. So far, I'm liking other the other things, but the quartz. I don't know. The quartz, like they they feel like they didn't have enough work put into them. A little bit, in my opinion. <laughs> um. Like, it's nice to have qualities, but what if you don't read the courts always that way, you know? So, yes. Okay, page of torches. Upright. A student or young person may be able to help you decipher something that you have never dared to understand. Okay. I can see that in the image, right? I can see that in the image. Reverse. Look deep into your own psyche and ask yourself what needs to be deciphered that's a little better so maybe it was really just that knight of cups like ooh, knight of cups is not good okay let's see the queen of swords queen of swords An intelligent, forthright person who can help you confront your fears in a safe way could be of great assistance. She may be a teacher, professor, or mentor, or she may speak to you in the form of a book, podcast, or a video. Eh. Reversed. Your inner wise teacher is waiting to help you. 
You may find her through meditation or simply finding a quiet space to think clearly. Okay, the reversed is better than the upright. I'm not really digging the upright for this one. That's what I read for the Queen of Bucks. Okay, let's see the Queen of Pentacles. I mean the King of Pentacles, rather. Okay, King of Pentacles. A powerful leader or mage can help you shed light on your own fears, possibly offer solutions or influence the outcome. Reversed. You have inner resources and core strength to overcome anything. You may be able to find your own wizard. Okay. Okay. So, overall, I love the artwork. I love the, the deck itself, like the, the cards themselves. I think the imagery is really well done. Um, even though some, there's only like a few cards that are kind of pippish, but I feel like most of them are pretty scenic or you can get the, the gist from what's going on in the card um, for that. So I feel like they did a great job in that regard the guidebook for me is a little hit or miss like in regards to the core cards i feel like the minor arcana is pr pretty decent and i feel like um the majors is pretty good as well like they're they're done pretty well but the the majors are always done well when, when it comes to inside edition decks I just feel like uh, more time should have been spent on the courts. I think the courts could have been done better. Some of them, anyway. Some of them could have been done better, in my opinion. Um, and, of course, this is just my opinion, right? That's always what the point of these videos are, is always to share my own opinion. Even whether, like, a deck is sent to me or not. The deck is beautiful. I think the artist did a fantastic job. The guidebook needs a little bit more work, I think. Um, it's not, for me specifically it's not quite there um in regards to the to like the meanings and things like that i feel like even though it's a small book i feel like they could have gone a bit deeper with the interpretations maybe make the images a bit smaller you know and give more interpretation for uh the cards themselves the quality, though, of course, is always nicely done. The books are always in color. I, I really like the quality that they have when it comes to the printing. But the words matter, especially for people who, you know, maybe they want this as their first deck. I don't know. Or maybe they want um, this as their second deck. And while some of it is really well done... There's other things that are lacking for me in, in that regard. But I still feel like this deck is way better than the Horror Tarot. The Horror Tarot is really a mess for me when it came to the guidebook. I really do not connect with that deck at all. I have it. It's in my collection. It will always stay in my collection because I really love the imagery. But I will probably never pick that deck up. <laughs> I will never use it. It will just be in my collection to be in my collection. It's a collection, collecting purposes uh, for that. But I feel like this deck specifically, I'll definitely use it. I might not just gravitate towards the book as much. I'll definitely just use the, the cards to use the cards. So I'm really excited to use it for that. I picked out one deck that I, an Oracle deck that I feel like would pair really well with this deck. Uh, it's the Halloween Oracle. So I thought we could change up the view a bit and check out um how the oracle pairs with this and i feel like this will be my october pairing honestly i really want to work with this deck because i really love the um, the vibes of the what's going on in the cards and i feel like it'll be really a really good time in my opinion to use uh with the halloween oracle so let's change up the view and check it out Okay, so, uh, yes, I was thinking that the Halloween Oracle by Stacey DeMarco, this is published by Blue Angel. Uh, this is the newest edition where it's matte, uh, matte cardstock. 
which I really love. And I thought that these would pair really well together. Honestly, maybe this would also pair well with the Universal Monsters. I don't know. I didn't even check to see if that would pair well, honestly. Or did I? I don't even remember. I don't even remember, actually. But let's take a look to see how this would pair. I feel like they're already pairing pretty good in my opinion like we have ghosts with regret with um <laughs> with the emperor and the ten of cups um so that's pretty interesting pretty gruesome also actually I'm just gonna move this over a little bit kind of center it a little bit more there we go that's a little better So we have mischief and play in between the six of wands and the four of pentacles. Definitely interesting. Oh, look at that. Happiness in our hearts and home in between the five of pentacles and the six of uh, seven of wands rather that's really interesting because you know how the five of pentacles is about not having you know the wealth the income but needing to reach out for help when you need it we have this person there they have a fire going we have a fire in here which is pretty cool we have fire in here so there's a lot of fire aspect in between the three cards um which is really interesting i feel like with the seven of wands typically it's about you know standing up for yourself defense defending and whatnot so maybe in order to find happiness you need to defend yourself more in regards to your own wealth and sticking up for yourself and what you need yeah i really like these together actually this is really good <clears throat> invisibility we have the eight of wands with the seven of pentacles all of flowers in between the eight of pentacles and the nine of wands <clears throat> yeah these are not shuffled properly at all um joy rejoicing in the present i love that it follows it's next to the um nine of pentacles but the fact that there's the nine of swords here <laughs> i don't know it's not too joyous there is some joy, or there could be the potential for some joy, but there's also some uh, some pain as well, some mental uh, agony, of some sorts. We have Dawn in between the Five of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles. Apple. In between the three of wands and the six of cups that's interesting i love how this is risk and reward and then we have the three of wands here which is all about you know the path that you want to go on and you have like multiple different ways that you can go so you have to like really think okay which way am i going but you also don't want to look to the past when it comes to understanding where you where you need to go, you want to look to the future. You want to take that risk where you get the rewards at the end of it. You know, you want to get to that six of uh, six of wands. We have midnight in between the four of wands and seven of cups. Interesting. Okay, last one, we have the veil in between the Fool and the Eight of Cups. Interesting. So we have the future. I feel like this would be like a new beginning card. And then we have 
the Eight of Cups, which is about leaving things behind. So in order to look to the future, you want to leave things behind in the past that no longer serve you. So things that are harmful for you and for your well-being that are in your past, you want to leave them there. You don't want to take them into the future. But you also don't want to be naive in the journey that you're about to start towards your future. So you want to kind of take off that blindfold and pay attention to what you're doing. That way you know where you're headed. That's what I think I'm going to go with for now. Just like... And sorry if you hear the plane. I don't know why. The plane is so loud. It's so low. I don't know what's going on. Anyway. Okay. Oh, I said I know I said the last the last one was gonna be the last one. This will be the last one. <laughs> Sweetness and synergy with uh, five of wands and the nine of cups. Very interesting. Yeah, I really like these two together, and I'm definitely going to pair these together. Uh, next month. I think I'm going to work with this particular deck uh, next month in this Oracle because I feel like they just pair so well together. This is like so good in my opinion. So good. So that was the Necronomicon Tarot Deck and Guidebook. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this particular deck. I'd love to have uh, your thoughts and what you think. Uh, in the comments below. It'd be nice to have a conversation with other people to see what other people are thinking specifically about this deck. So do let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, turn on that bell so you can be notified every time I post a brand new video. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it's greatly appreciated and helps me in the long run. I do thank you so much for watching and I hope that you have a great day.